Hey guys, Ron Lyons, FriscoRealEstate.net, here with someone that you know oh so well. <laughs> Justin Steiner with City Bank Mortgage. And we are in a fantastic restaurant in Salina, Texas, downtown on the square. Tell everybody where we're at. I love this. Yeah, place. no, we're, we're at Inning Jack, and it's also Inning Jack Cafe. It's right off of the square, and it's so fantastic. Rachel Beatty is the owner here, and uh, Inning Jack Cafe has some, some great sandwiches provided by Jones, and also some salads, some great coffee as well. And also starting September 1st, the, the cottage law is now allowing stores like Inn Jack Cafe to actually sell baked goods, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, and that cookies really good. and things. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> so so basically, we've got a really, really nice store here. There's all kinds of, I mean, I don't know if you're going to find anything here that you might want to wear. There, there's some great home decor here that I, might, I might get, but there's also some great clothing for women and and everything so it's a really great store to check out if you are interested yeah and then in the in the back there's a small bar and it's a coffee bar it's super super and I'm, I'm just gonna use this word it's cute okay it's really nice and i just had a white hot chocolate and it was insanely good it was very very good so and I'll tell everybody what yeah, you know i mean if you're diabetic though don't get what yeah you don't get what i don't get what i have but i had a four shot espresso <laughs> four shot um i'm really wide awake right now but it's a really good coffee <laughs> So. Now we uh, we just got back from doing an interview with the coach of the Salina football team, and uh, that that was an amazing interview. Wasn't that great? Yeah, I tell you, Bill Elliott, Coach Bill Elliott, is a fantastic gentleman, a great leader in this community, um, helps guide and lead our boys here in high school and and in other sports as well. He's also the athletic director. Really great, humble man, and I really enjoyed it meeting him. It was a fantastic interview. Why don't we cut to that interview real quick? Let's show that interview, yep. and then we'll come back, talk a little bit about real estate, and uh, kind of wrap everything up like Sounds that. Sounds great. Let's do it. Okay. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow then it's done for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, yeah. for the record, for the record, for the record, for the record. Been a, for the record. Been, been a little too nice for y'all. Now I got an up price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. A6 all the hay. I won't get a ball today. Got lost in the ball and A's. I'm flipping the balls. I'm flipping the flipping the flipping the all record, all record. Hey everyone, Justin Still Scott here, here and I had a pleasure of of interviewing and meeting with uh, Coach Elliot. Coach, how you doing today, sir? Great. Thanks, Justin. Well, here. Thank you for meeting with us. Yes, sir. So I'm I'm wearing Slina Orange. You look good. I, I had yeah, to get colors on. But I need to get a new shirt like yours. Yeah, this I is one from Brookshire's. <laughs> Anyways, but um, Coach, appreciate you meeting with us. We, we just want to help educate um, future Salina residents and maybe some people that have been here for a while about the history of Salina Athletic Program, about the football team. You're the head coach of the football team for varsity. And just tell us a little bit about your history here, if you will. Uh, well, I've been very fortunate and very blessed uh, to live in Salina. I've uh, been here 26 years and uh, been able to raise my family here. Two boys gone through the program, graduated from the high school here. And that was one of my goals uh, after I got here in Salina was my family staying here, my boys be able to go to school here and graduate because what a special place it is. Yeah. Uh, and, and just the way the community uh, surrounds their kids and whatever they're doing, whatever extracurricular, not just football, but all our sports, band, drill team, cheerleaders, whatever it is, that they just support the kids so much and do so much for them. It's a special place. 
uh, you know, very fortunate to, to have coached under uh, G.A. Moore, the winningest uh, coach in high school football. Uh, Butch Ford, another great coach. Uh, coach played for both of them and then was actually able to, wow. to uh, coach under both of them and just the uh, amount of success that we were able to have as a football program and just the things that went on here over the last 26 years has been amazing. Uh, sure. Never could imagine that that would happen as I started my coaching career 26 years ago. So just very fortunate to be here and just uh, be a part of such a great school with so much tradition and so much culture. That's amazing. I, I know that Slana has eight championships. Why is that so important to recognize? Well, you know, it's... It's a lot of you go to a lot of their states and people say well, there's the teams with more state championship than that, but but Texas football is just so different. The system, the way it's set up, uh, how difficult it is to win a state championship yeah. in the state of Texas. The amount of schools that there are, uh, you know, it takes. There's so much that goes into a season of winning a state championship. And so you yeah. think about all the great teams like South Lake Carroll, like Allen, you know, uh, Coppell, all these different schools that are so great that. They don't have eight state championships, you know. Sure. It's just it's amazing uh, that we've been able to do that. You know, we had a, a four-year run there. We won four in a row, and uh, you know, it's amazing what we were able to do in that time period. You know, from 1995, you know, till now, and then, and then of course the one state championship in 1974. Uh, and so it's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. You know, the, the win streak, 68 game win streak, to win 68 games in a row in the state of Texas is is just unreal. Yeah. You know, to have that that's a record that I don't know if it'll ever be broke. You know, so <laughs> uh, very very fortunate in those aspects. Well, I love that. Obviously, we all like to win, right? I mean, I think all, we all want to win. But I love to learn a little bit more because as I've gotten older, I used to be an athlete, and and I really appreciate winning. But I recognize a lot of the life values I learned in high school and college sports, yes. and love to learn about what you're instilling in our kids. My kids are just eight. What are you doing? Like I see on the board back here, will, passion, and love. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about okay. that. Well, that, that little deal on the board right there, I, I do a, uh, in the spring and summertime, I meet with my senior leaders for the football team. And I've got 12 guys this year that are on that, that leadership council. And we do leadership meetings all through the spring. And that's just teaching them how to be a leader and teaching them what it is to lead. Uh, and that was kind of the thing we talked about. Basically, that little, that little image up there, it shows, you know, a lot of people, they'll, they lead by fear, by punishment, you know, there, there's results. Some by reward, by money, by wins. Sure. Uh, but to be a true leader, you have to lead from the heart. Uh, that's that will, the passion, the love comes right. from that. When you when you lead that way, it, it's a lot. It lasts a lot longer. It, it withstands all the storms you have to go through. Uh, and so that's kind of the last thing we were studying right there towards the towards the end of May, uh, and then kind of going into June. And that's why that little draw is still up there. My art is not very good, as you can see, but it's uh, but it got <laughs> the message across. But like you talked about. Winning is important, and man, we want to win. You know, I've been a competitor. My, I started playing football when I was nine years old. I guess played all the way until I was 23. And man, winning is huge, and winning a slide is huge, and the expectation from our community and the people is huge in slide to be successful and win. But when you get down to it, what we do, while we coach, while we do what we do here in Salina, is for a bigger purpose, and that's to teach our young men and our young women what it is to be a man and a woman yeah. in our society. And, and that's what I push on all our coaches, to be an example of what a husband, a father is, mm -hmm. what a mother, what a wife is, that great example so that our kids see that. Uh, you know, our, our purpose for our program is, it, you know, our purpose statement basically says that we want to develop young men and young women that will develop excellence, integrity, uh, empathy and grit so that they will be contributing citizens in our, in our world that will help develop you know Salina whatever community they go into someday and that's when I know I'm successful is when I see some of our players 10 15 years down the road and they come back and they tell me about their life and they tell me that you know they're showing me their families introduce me to their wives and, and their kids that's when I know we've been successful yeah uh, that's when I know you know that we've done what we're supposed to be doing that's what it really all comes down to uh, tell us when does football start this this season uh, we we'll start actually. Uh, we're actually in, in conditioning camp right now, and actually yeah. doing some skill work all through the summer. UIL actually loosened up rules where we could actually do skill work oh, now that's nice. in the sure. summertime. So we get two hours a week of actual skill work in. Uh, the actual camp starts up August fifth, and we'll start our two a day camp time that period, and then school starts up about two weeks after that, and then we'll be rolling through the season. You know, the last games right there at the end of August. Uh, this right and uh, well, yeah, it's not not far away. So you know, we're starting to kind of fine tune things getting camp all together and ready to go and, and getting all that stuff, you know, set for the season to take off. When are you going to be moving to the, uh, the new location? Well, the in? goal is August 1st, okay. and it's going to be a tight timeline. So we're okay. we're keeping our fingers crossed and, and hoping that we're going to get in there come August 1st. I mean, they're really close. I mean, those guys are, 
Uh, North Star Builders are doing a great job up there with what they're Looks doing. Amazing. Man, they are, uh, they're working seven days a week sometimes, uh, working long hours. I can go up there seven o'clock at night and there'll still be guys that are working. It's amazing what they've got going on up there and how they're working, trying to get that done for us. So we're definitely moving in there in August, yeah. uh, and we're very excited about that. The coaches are, the kids are. I think our whole community is. Every every day I go up there, I see people driving around up there or trying to get in there, sneak in. And you'll get a look, you know, <laughs> uh, at what we're getting. But it's a, uh, you know, we're very blessed that uh, you know our school board, our administration, Mr. Demasher stepped up, you know, and decided to go ahead and fulfill what the voters voted for in 2008 and, and build that athletic program. That to me, what our program deserves what it's done in Absolutely. its history to represent, to actually represent our program. And, you know, it's going to do so much for all of our programs, not just the football team, but all of our boys and girls sports in general. It'll be able to use the indoor, the weight room, uh, when baseball, softball come online in the spring, uh, be able to have all those facilities up there. Yeah. It's just going to do so much for all our programs and for even other things other than sports. Like I told you earlier, the band director's already called me and scheduled every day at like <laughs> noon being in the indoor, you know, so he can bring the band in there and they can march in there on the indoor. Uh, and that's what we'll do. We'll use that, you know, cheerleaders, drill team, you know, all the different groups will be able to come there and use that facility. It's just going to be a great thing for our whole community. Indoors. I mean, yeah. man, I, there's, they must be so excited. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, we're on the, uh, the original property, Bobcat Stadium property, yes, which sir. is, we are talking about this earlier, it's being leased. Yes, sir. By like $15 a month? $15 a year. A year. $15 a year. Since year. the 1950s. This was actually done in the 1950s, and it's wow. been, yeah, every year. So from the Owsley family, I mean, they're a long time uh, family has a long time history here in Salina and uh, so just really generous and you mentioned that this stadium will still be used for middle school for the time being yes right yeah we're gonna we're gonna actually move you know we've got two field houses here our old field house where we used to house everybody well the junior high is in there now they'll actually move over to this newer facility and, and have this which would be a nice for junior high to have this the weight room we've got the locker rooms here They'll use this as their game field, uh, you know, until we build a new junior high. And at that time, we'll have to build a, you know, sure. some type of a, a practice facility there for them, uh, you know. But then this will still hopefully remain, you know, hopefully it'll remain with the city and remain something for our youth to use. Sure. Uh, I know that the Owsley family feels that they would want to do something with that. And I know our city does too, and I think our school district does. Is that right? Because it can be a great park for our entire community to use and do so many things with. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you talked about, you know, moving from here. There, there's there's some mixed emotions for me leaving this this stadium. I, I played here as a kid, you know, coming over to Pilot Point. Uh, when this field was grass, I mowed it, took care of it for years before we turfed <laughs> it. Uh, you know, my boys played on this field. You know, I've coached on this field for 26 years. There's so many memories and so much tradition here. You know, you, there, there's a lot of leaving this place also. But I also know what we're going to and the great future we've got. And I know the growth that's coming. And I know the things that we have to do to take care of our kids, to take care of our community to make it a safer environment for our community right. uh, with parking and just the facility in general. Uh, and so it's a great thing that we're going to go into. We'll miss a lot of this, but we're trying to take a little bit of our, our tradition, our culture, take a few things with us from here to there yeah. and what we do and how we do things. We're also taking the old uh, entrance sign that we, we right, took down right, okay. uh, a few years ago. We redid the entrance out here. We kept the old overhead gate. It's right out here. And we're actually going to build a monument up there and use that that in the good. entrance coming in and so that's going to be a neat thing i think to bring a part of this stadium with us right. up there is that that actually that over they told me that was built like the 1955 56 they built that uh wow. on that entrance out there so yes sir. that's a, that's a nice way to nod our heads to the uh, history of, yes, sir. of this area tell me about what what does slime mean to you uh to me slime is probably one of those special places in america to me it's one of the greatest small towns in america uh, you know, growing up in this area uh, and seeing the growth that's taken place. You know, I first came here 26 years ago, there was nothing here, there was nothing in Frisco. Uh, and just seeing the expansion, the growth, and the people that are coming. And we know it's coming, and you know, you can't fight it. You might as well not be upset about it. A lot of people fight it, they don't want it, want it coming. And, you know, and I would love for us to stay a small town too, you know, but I think that, that what makes Salina so special is the community and the people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the love that they have for their kids, it's the support that they give their school, their kids, and everything that they're doing. Uh, I think it's just all the things that go into making us what Salina is and just the belief system they have, their faith that they have, uh, the way they live their lives. And I think that as new people come in, that's going to be our fight. That's going to be one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to do is maintain our tradition yeah. and our culture and what's got us to being where we are today. And I think it's, people are moving here. They see what we have and I think they come here because they 
They see what we have and they want to be a part of that. They want their kids to be able to be a part of that. Right. And uh, that's what we want to maintain for them, to, be, to continue to teach these kids you know, the, the morals that they've got to live by and to be a good citizen, to be a good man and a good woman, and, and to teach that to them. Yeah. And I think that people accept that and buy into that because that's what, the, that's what we all want for our kids. And that's what most people are coming here for is to get into this school system, to get into the athletic program, the different events and things that are going on here. And hopefully we can maintain that over the time. And I think that Slida will continue to be that special place because of people like you, uh, our city council, and, and the, the people we have on our city council, uh, our leadership for our city, our school board, uh, and our administration. I think everybody has that same goal and that same vision, and that's what's going to keep Salina special. As long as we stay on that same page together as a team, working together, yep. which I think the city has done such a great job with us over the last several years of really developing that relationship with our school district and, and helping us in so many ways. Uh, to maintain where we're at and to make us even better. So I'm, I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about what's going to come. Uh, and uh, I think we'll just keep rolling where we're at and just keep getting better every year. But, Coach, we really appreciate you being with us. Yes, sir. It was great. So, I enjoyed it. It was a great time. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's Lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. So Justin, that interview was fantastic, wasn't it? I tell you, it was. It was a great time to spend with that coach. So it was good. I really appreciated it. I have an awful lot of respect for the coach, Thank you. the program, and obviously he cares very much about the community. Yes. So let's let's talk just a little bit briefly about real estate. As we know right now, it's super hot outside, but <laughs> it is super hot in the real estate market right now. I mean, things are going crazy. So um, one of the things that I feel like is driving that right now is rates. Yeah, lower lower interest rates. Uh, interest rates are at 31 month lows. I mean, think about that, almost three years lows. Um, I've helped out many people be able to refinance and pay off debt, credit card debt. I've had people pay off some uh, tax liens and just really great time if you have equity in your house. Look at maybe refinancing, but if you want to upgrade or downsize, man, check out Ron and and me, and we can actually help you maybe get into your right home and with a great interest rate too. Absolutely, so we will work together. I will help you sell a home if you're trying to sell right now. I will help you with the purchase of a new one if that's the direction you wanna go. Certainly we can run whatever scenario you've got through Justin, make sure we can find out exactly what you can afford, what your payments are gonna be, how everything's Absolutely. gonna work out, and we work really well together as a team. So. We'd love to put our resources and our skills and everything together and help you realize whatever real estate dreams you've got. So, Absolutely. Well, Justin, it's, uh, it's been a really, really good day. It's been fantastic. I loved uh, doing the interview. Love the, the store here. And, and, and remind them again of where we're at. We're at Annie Jack, Annie Jack Cafe. And if we don't see you here, we'll see you at a football game or maybe help you buy a house. Absolutely. And, and tell everybody how we can, uh, how, how can people get a hold of you? You can call me at 469-855-9062. Or you can also email me at jsteiner, S-T-E-I-N-E-R, at city with a Y, dot bank. Good. My phone number is 214-783-5440. You can reach me at ron at friscorealestate.net. Um, we're all over the internet. We're on Facebook. We're, I mean, you're a very social everything. guy. You're all yeah. over everything. everything. I'm all over everything. So connect with us any way that you'd like. Definitely see us around town. And we will be seeing you in our next video. Bye.